Well, we're just getting ready for Mass, but this is a very special occasion, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. I hope this day is going to be a wonderful occasion of many laughs and high calories for you around the table. No counting calories on Thanksgiving. If you're watching it after Thanksgiving, then you got to worry about nutrition facts, but not for Thanksgiving. <laughs> Greetings to you, and I give thanks to God for you and for your kindness and for listening to the Word of God day by day that your life may be enriched by Jesus always and to the way of the sacrifice of the cross that he introduces us to. And look who has returned for Mass from school. We have prayed for Deacon Jim and Marco, both of whom were with us for the summer of 2021. And you're back. Welcome we're back. back. We're back. <laughs> greetings, back. greetings. So how long are you back for? And when does your experience end for the fall semester? I'm back <laughs> for the week. I leave this weekend and I have wow. a few more weeks to go. Final Good for time, you. So. Good for you. And how about you? Welcome Same back. Same here, different college. That's <laughs> <laughs> different college. <laughs> when does your uh, semester come to an end, Antonio? Uh, I think it came to an end a long time ago. Oh, <laughs> thanks be to God. <laughs> That's the reason for Thanksgiving. You don't have to worry about school. Uh, you get all your exams and papers done. Uh, thanks be to God. Uh, remember, everyone, think of one or two blessings in your life to give thanks to God for and do not forget to say a prayer before the close of this day in thanksgiving for all those many gifts. I'm going to give you a gift now. Now I'm going to go behind the organ and play you a tune. That's my gift to you. Maybe not. I can't think of a greater gift but for me to avoid and not play a tune for you and we'll leave it at that. <laughs> so Thanks be to God and happy Thanksgiving. I'm thanking God for you. Take good care. Welcome back and welcome back, Antonio. <laughs> See you later. All right. Bye bye, everybody. See ya. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs>
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I have made to the house of Israel and Judah. In those days, in that time, I will raise up for David a just shoot. He shall do what is right and just in the land. In those days, Judah shall be safe and Jerusalem sh shall dwell secure. This is what they shall call her. Our Lord, the Lord, our justice. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we have for you, so as to strengthen your hearts to be blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus. Will all his holy ones, amen. Finally, brothers and sisters, we earnestly ask and exhort you in the Lord Jesus that as you received from us how you should conduct yourselves to please God, and as you are conducting yourselves, 
you do so even more. For you know what instructions we gave you to the Lord Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on earth nations will be in dismay, perplexed by the roaring of the sea and its waves. People will die of fright in anticipation of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. But when these signs begin to happen, stand erect and raise your heads, because your redemption is at hand. Beware that your hearts do not become drowsy from carousing and drunkenness and the anxieties of daily life, that the day catch you by surprise like a trap. For that day will assault everyone who lives on the face of earth. Be vigilant at all times and pray that you have the strength to escape the tribulations that are imminent and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, through the words of the Gospel. May our sins be wiped away. Well, in tuning in today to this broadcast of the Mass, We give thanks to Almighty God for the celebration that we just had a few days earlier on Thursday, hopefully with our family and our friends around us. Maybe it was for you a 5,000 calorie experience on Thursday. (laughs) After all the big meal and especially those big desserts and the the second course at six or seven o'clock in the evening when the football games continue. (laughs) It was a great day of joy, I hope and pray for you and in communion with those who may not have been around your table, still they hold a place spiritually in our hearts. Those brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers, husbands and wives, children even, or other friends or relatives who used to be around that table. I think of you especially if this has been the first Thanksgiving that you celebrated without that special someone in your life who was always around the table, so to speak, in the course of your life. And now we pray in communion with the living God. We now turn a page in the life of the church beyond Thanksgiving to the beginning of a liturgical year. As we look at the various calendars in our lives, I cannot find a single calendar in my life that matches the Catholic Church's liturgical calendar an academic semester or year does not end at the end of November. For the most part, people that may have been around our Thanksgiving table had to go back to school. And they go back for maybe two, three, or four weeks of intense final exams, final research papers that are due. But very rarely, unless it's a trimester system perhaps, as in the days at Union College, would the semester come to an end um, the fourth Saturday or fourth Sunday of November. Most fiscal years for organizations or businesses do not come to an end on November 28th. 
Maybe they come to an end on December 31st with a new fiscal year matching the calendar. Maybe June uh, 30th, the end of the fiscal year, and then another one begins July the 1st. But very rarely would a fiscal year come to an end on the fourth Sunday of November. Certainly our calendar January to December does not respect the day of the fourth Sunday in November to be the beginning of the new year. Yet I tell you, Happy New Year. What is that all about? And why should we care? There is something unique about the claim of Christ Jesus on each of us. So I think it is rather appropriate that in the church, the claim of Jesus on the calendar of our lives is unique so that it is okay that there is nothing in our lives quite like the liturgical calendar. And that's acceptable to us because the way Jesus makes a claim on our lives has a beginning and an end, as we learn in Revelation, God, I am the beginning, I am the end. And there are these cycles of our lives that we respect, given to us by God. There is a natural beginning and a natural ending to the various stages or epochs of our lives as we, as we have continued on the Christian journey? No. When we were in school, there was the beginning of the school in the pre-kindergarten or kindergarten era, all the way through the end of grammar school. And one ending was also a beginning. We moved from grammar school into another experience of education. One ending is a new beginning. And the cycle continues with the Lord closing one door and opening another. I think it is very imp important for us to have our own special year that we mark the beginning of Jesus' time among us, his first coming, as well as his second coming in the beginning of the new year in him, in the church. We do that because we are in the middle of the two comings or the two advents of Jesus. Jesus lowered himself to become human being like you and me. And praise God for that event, that lowering, that we may be elevated to the heart of God. But as promised to us and honored by the words of St. Luke, Jesus Christ is also pointing us to his return which will be the union of heaven and earth. Whenever that day is, though, we don't quite know. And that cannot be plotted precisely on our calendar. We cannot put that in our smartphones or devices, that it will be on a certain day we can have a reminder that beeps at us that this is going to happen on that day. So the preparation is a bit unknown. And it's acceptable for that preparation to be unknown because the cycles of our lives are the beginnings and the ends, the ends and the beginnings, all happening in him. We place our trust more and more, not in plotting our way, but in honoring Jesus' way. And Jesus' way is not to be plotted on a calendar, but it is con to continue, as St. Paul teaches, in a path toward love, that path of discipleship when we do not quite know precisely how we will be traversing on that highway, but yet we place greater development in the work of discipleship that we need to participate in because we never know as we encounter someone when it is a beginning for them or an end, something on the end of their cycle. Remember I said earlier, there were people at one time around the Thanksgiving table that for this year, 2021, are no longer there. The feast a few days ago was very different for them than it may have been for you. Very different. Marked by a certain sadness and a feeling of despair. But the feeling of despair must be placed in the hands of God in the midst of the two comings of Jesus, where every ending is a beginning. And every year we in the church 
mark the end of one year and the beginning of another, so that our hearts, when we may feel they are at an ending, are only just then beginning to be elevated by the heart of God. St. Gregory the Great, in commenting on the teaching of Jesus on his second coming and that preparation that must occur in our hearts for when the cycle turns again, said this, Dearly beloved, keep that day, meaning the second coming of Christ, keep that day before your eyes, and whatever you now believe to be burdensome will be light in comparison with it. There is a great perspective that the church can learn from honoring the year of liturgy in Christ Jesus. And that perspective is that what we endure by trial now, and I don't mean trial with a judge, but trial in terms of the hardships of life, what we endure now as trial must be interpreted with the lens of what Jesus will do for us at the end meaning his beginning, when he returns again. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, we pray, during the memorial acclamation. So we pray that, yes, when Jesus does come again, while it may be the union of heaven and earth, at the very end, as marked by certain signs, it is a new beginning, a new communion that the church can share with Christ Jesus, and we pray, as God the Father has admitted, admitted us into the kingdom of heaven. This is supposed to be different for us than any other experience in our lives, like a fiscal year, a tax year, April 15th, the calendar year. It's all different because Jesus makes a very, very unique and different claim on every person. If every ending brings us to a new beginning, it happens in him and through him and not through another source. We take a new color, the violet, so that it is not just being watchful, meaning a passive observation as if we were at the right field deck of the baseball stadium watching from afar, but there is an active preparation, especially now, not just to think about what Jesus did for us in becoming man, but a preparation of our lives now, no matter when that day happens, when he comes again, that we will be as ready as we possibly can. Do not accept the argument where some say, well, Jesus already was born 2,000 years ago. Why does the church need the Advent season? Jesus already came into the world. Jesus needs to come into our hearts every day, every year, again and again. And the church marks that liturgically, but also spiritually, that the Catholic Church and our journey with one another as brothers and sisters is not some Disney film that records in time something that occurred once, just 2,000 years ago or so, but it is a living, it is a didactic, it is an energetic experience of brothers and sisters walking in journey and communion, not just with each other, though we are, but also with Christ Jesus, our head. It is Jesus guiding the church day by day and not as some history lesson of what happened, but Jesus as alive here and now, especially in the most holy Eucharist, but also in the sacred word, sacred music, and if you can believe it, even in the homily, as I try to announce Jesus' words, not mine. The message of the week is always Jesus' message, not mine. We're just loudspeakers or announcers. <laughs> and this is the energy of Christ Jesus. That is why there is a unique year that the church honors Jesus, his first coming and his second coming. So we're in that in-between. But there are some who's experience may be ending, some whose experience may be beginning, but that is all marked in Jesus our Lord. And that is why the church takes that time, especially now, to 
not just passively watch for him, but to actively prepare the heart for the coming of Jesus again into our lives. And now for the blessing of our Advent wreath here at Our Lady of Mount Carmel Church. The Advent wreath is a visual sign of our preparation in the heart for the coming of Christ our Savior, not just being born among us, God and man, but also his second coming. And so for the blessing of the Advent wreath and the candles. Lord God, your church joyfully awaits the coming of its Savior who enlightens our hearts and dispels the darkness of ignorance and sin. Pour forth your blessings upon us as we light the candles of this wreath. May their light reflect the splendor of Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us enjoy, present our prayers to the living God in watchful expectation and preparation for, our com for the coming of our Lord. Okay. For the church, that we may be attentive to Christ, Jesus' presence and action in our lives, so that we may be ready to act when God invites us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For this community, that Christ may increase our love for one another, and help us to be overflowing with generosity to all those who are in need, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all those whose hopes are unfulfilled and whose dreams are dying, that God will inspire them with a new vision and a new opportunity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who travel today, including our friends and family members who joined us for Thanksgiving, that the Lord will guide them on the way back home or back to school and throughout their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
for the prayer intentions of Joel and Monica Barrett, for whom, for whom this Mass is being applied today, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For Ch Ch Jan and Chet Cronado and Trainer family, Grace Massaroni, Roscoe Visconti, Edward Doris and Michael Kubek, Shirley Dulutsky, Brian Keenan, John, Marianne, Mark, and Andy Cook, John Party, Vina Aini, Anna and Joseph Brennan, Salvador Leo, Dorothy and Chester Morrow, Sr., Biago Renzi, Leona Dobernek, Mary and Ted Lewinsky, Luigi Stachetti, deceased members of the deceaser family, Helen Biaga, Marshall and Marianne Robluski, Marsha Horn, G Janet Weaver, John Scott, and for all the dead that they may rest in the peace of the Lord, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And we pray for the intentions we hold in the silence of our heart. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Also for the prayer intentions of our youth in America, that the Lord may watch over them and protect them always on the journey of life. We pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. And we ask all of our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, the fruit of the earth and work of human hands, that will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, O Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, the fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink with humble spirit and contrite hearts, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. Dear brothers and sisters, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed that his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal life that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed
Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Edward Scharfenberger, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. 
Peace be with you, everyone. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. faithful to your commandments. Never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. It has been an honor to serve you in the celebration of this Mass with the good Lord Jesus by our side. And wherever you may be watching this video from, you are part of our family and in communion with the good Lord and with one another. We have been praying for all the souls of the faithful departed during the month of November. And this is the last month, uh, last week in the month of November. And we have honored throughout this, the course of this month all those who have fallen asleep in the Lord. And so we continue to pray for the repose of their souls and before the living God. May God be with you on the journey ahead and uh, 
Happy New Year. <laughs> the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord.